Parker, expected approach time 34, approach button 17, the altimeter 29 or 9 or 7. Welcome back to the DCS Situation Report, everyone. Thanks for tuning in again for news and information about DCS World. I'm your host, of course, Prickly Hedgehog. And as always, I do hope this video finds you well, wherever you're tuning in from. A shorter news later this week from the ED team as we move towards the next big open beta patch, which I believe is scheduled for next week, if I read the tea leaves correctly. Nonetheless, we have some interesting info about the Black Shark 3, a significant overhaul of the F5E Tiger II and a new campaign on an aircraft often asked about for this very kind of content. Well, now it's here. Well, let's start with a snippet on the Black Shark 3, which sees some new helmets being produced for the game for that aircraft, which, as you are probably aware, is getting a significant exterior makeover, among other things. The old characteristic holes and oxygen mask fasteners of the fixed-wing aircraft versions of the helmets have been removed. The helicopter variant of this iconic Soviet-era helmet is equipped with a standard microphone and a mount. In the accompanying screenshot that you should be looking at right now, there is a counterweight which is attached to the back of the helmet for use with night vision goggles. The helmet received a protective matte green color and it will be first available as part of the new Black Shark pilot model which is a lot more attractive, I must say, and I'm always in favor of aesthetic tweaks to the various models in the game. No word yet on a tighter timeline for the release of the updated Black Shark 3, which will of course be a purchasable model, but as I mentioned in a comment on Wax's latest Apache video, the Black Shark and the Hind sit nicely next to the Apache as some of the best rotary wing simulations we have in the business right now. Stay tuned, of course, for more information, and as an aside, someone asked me about news on the Kiowa as part of my recent third-party developer update, which I understand is back on track. As of earlier this year, I am aware, too, that work is continuing, and you may have noticed numerous updates to the Gazelle, which is also a Polychop product, which was lagging behind a little bit over the last year and wasn't really getting a lot of attention. So that's good news. Basically, don't despair. Keep your eyes and ears open for more information on the Kiowa when, of course, it comes to hand. I know a lot of people are looking forward to that aircraft as much as the Apache, so we'll see how things go. All right, leveled off. We'll accelerate to about 220. Another aircraft getting some love, it appears, is the F5E Tiger II. Now, ED announced that they have improved the flight dynamics modeling to account for payload-specific as well as aircraft-specific aerodynamics. The initial implementation of this new approach includes improved wingtip missile aerodynamics for the F5E Tiger II during flat spin regime and enhanced modeling effects of payload to airframe and interference on supersonic drag for Viper and, uh, and the Hornet. You can expect these updates soon. Now, what exactly this means in terms of performance isn't entirely clear just yet, but I think the statement indicates some pretty potent number crunching has gone on in order to provide a more realistic flight experience. I'm curious if this will translate over to the AI aircraft, say bouncing some heavily laden strike group, whose performance envelopes are obviously going to be reduced if they're carrying bags and bombs under wing. Despite popular assumption, I must add, pilots don't typically drop their fuel tanks at the slightest provocation. Tanks are not actually expendable and are ditched in emergencies only. Obviously, having to carry them restricts the aircraft's performance, both in terms of G limits, but also, of course, increased drag, maneuverability, and fuel consumption. One of the few times I've actually read about pilots dropping their tanks was the F-16 pilot, I think it was during Desert Storm, who actually dropped his tanks to avoid the six SAMs that were shot at him, and, of course, he survived. That was an extreme example, and I think he wrote... Well, it was mentioned in the article that I read that he initially said the aircraft wasn't really doing what he wanted it to, to do, and then he dropped the tanks and got the uh, maneuverability back that he had uh, uh, needed to avoid those six SAMs. It's a great video on YouTube if you ever look it up. It's pretty, pretty incredible footage. All right, again, for the ED product, though, it's going to be very interesting to see what they come up with in terms of an explanation about that work that they're doing and how it gets implemented in the game and what kind of physical expectations we can see in the flight model. Obviously, 
The F-16's flight model was upgraded recently and it's been extremely well received. So overall, this is positive stuff. And again, I'm interested to see exactly what the implementation looks like in the game. Now, ED also announced here some upcoming campaigns, and one of those is produced by none other than Reflected Simulations, who has produced some of the best campaigns in the game. This is another one for the DCS Spitfire Mark IX and is known as the DCS Spitfire Beware, Beware campaign. Now, the blurb describes that in the winter of 1942, the raging air battle over Europe was fierce. The Fokker Wolfs and Mischerschmitz, flown by the Luftwaffe's Experten, proved to be more than a worthy foe for the RAF's new Mark IX. Total air supremacy of the Allies was still just a distant dream, of course, but then again, the Luftwaffe was far from in control of the British skies. Now, at the heart of this battle stood the Biggin Hill Wing with West Lancashire and the Ile de France squadrons. So soon you too can join the 611 Squadron at the height of the fight for air supremacy over Europe and be a fighter pilot in the RAF in the most realistic way possible. That's really, really cool. Now, I read uh, New Zealand ace uh, pilot Alan Deere and his biography several years ago, which covered the defense of Britain and then the offensive campaign in occupied Europe, which was a real challenge to the Allies' tactics and experiences that they were having. So certainly the early variants of the Spitfire, which is obviously we're talking pre-Mark IX variants, uh, were not a good match for the Fokker Wolf. And uh, especially if you were an unwary or inexperienced pilot, which many of them unfortunately were. So this will be an interesting campaign and some really interesting material for World War II fans to challenge uh, their flight experiences with the Mark IX and those formidable foes. So uh, stay tuned for that module's uh, release in the game and we'll see how that goes. Thanks again to Reflected Sim who is a machine. He's got so many campaigns on the go. I just uh, saw an interview recently on the Tomcast where Paco uh, Shirichi was talking about his work with Reflected Sim for yet another F-14 uh, campaign, which I have mentioned in the past. So that's another one that they are, are working on right now with uh, hundreds of pages of script and stuff. So pretty exciting stuff. Now, as mentioned, there is also another campaign on offer too, and this, I believe, is the first for the JF-17. And I have been asked numerous times when such a campaign would be offered for fans of that particular aircraft, and it seems that those prayers have been answered by Stone Sky. The campaign is known as MAD, or Mutually Assured Destruction, and features a series of immersive missions as a PMC pilot. We don't have a lot more information, unfortunately, at this time, so stay tuned for more when it comes to hand on that particular topic in the very near future. Should be an interesting one. We'll round out this week's newsletter with a mention to check out WAGS' latest update video on the Apache, which in real simple terms went through the new auto hover mode. Now this will allow hopefully all of us to be hover gods in the game, within reason of course, but obviously it provides a, uh, an immensely handy feature for the aircraft. It's going to be part of several other upgrades to the George AI system I understand, and of course multiplayer features, which will allow you to eventually take charge of the front seat with the AI pilot. And that's a pretty neat feature and a very clever one for ED with that very, very popular module, which I know is a fan favorite. And of course, well-deserved too, because it is a brilliant module. As I said, it's been a fantastic addition to the game. And like many of the other helicopters that we now have on offer, includes some pretty unique flying experiences not previously available to us in this degree of realism with this particular helicopter. It remains the premium helicopter simulation in any platform, on my opinion. So stay tuned for more work and improvements to the Apache, which is coming along really nicely. So yes, a short video this week, unfortunately, and this brings us to the end of another DCS sit rep. Stay tuned for more news in the coming weeks. I'm taking a little break from work next week to recharge and plow into some home front stuff. If you like the video today, don't forget to like and subscribe, comment, 
in the comments section below. And if you want to go a little further, there's always the super thanks button as well. Either way, I appreciate all of your support. We're ever so close to 8,000 subscribers. 10, of course, is my aim for this year, which may be a little ambitious, but we'll see if we're, uh, we're going to get there. And if you're willing to subscribe, and about 50% of you are, well, I just need another 50% of you, and uh, you can imagine what my uh, subscription levels would be like. Thanks to the dude who said I deserved a million subs. I appreciate it. Thumbs up on that. All right. Hey, take care. Thanks again, everybody. We'll see you next time on the DCS Situation Report.